Hey YouTube, Reef Spy here. Today I'm going to do another video on my Keeping Reef Fish series. Today I'll be focusing on invertebrates. Now you're probably saying, wait a minute, invertebrates aren't fish. And that's true. But they do cover just about all of the other animals that we keep in our reef tanks besides fish. So I decided they deserve their own highlight video and that's what I'll be covering today. Many of the invertebrates, or inverts as they're commonly called, will perform very important functions within the reef tank, and many of them will be part of what is known as the cleanup crew. What the cleanup crew does is help in the overall tank maintenance. They will typically help break down any uneaten food, fish waste, or even eat nuisance algae that may be growing within our reef tanks. What we're looking at here is the emerald crab, and these guys are great for consuming algae. And most notably, they're known to consume bubble algae. Now they may look intimidating with their large claws, but mainly what they're after is algae, and they'll spend all day grazing on bits of algae that they find growing on the live rock. They are generally considered safe around fish, but as a wise man once said, never trust a crab. So as they do grow in size, you will want to keep an eye on them to make sure that they aren't going after some of your prized fish. Another type of invert that is a mainstay of any cleanup crew is the hermit crab. There are many different types of hermit crabs available and they make for great overall scavengers. They go for pretty much anything that's on the floor of the tank, whether it be uneaten food, dead or dying material, or pretty much any algae that they find as they work their way through the aquarium. This here is the dwarf blue leg hermit crab. He's just one of many of the types of crabs available. We also have red leg hermits, which tend to get a little bit larger than the blue legs. It's important to keep a supply of shells available for the hermit crabs. They will grow and require larger homes. It's a good idea to scatter some empty shells around the tank Otherwise, you run the risk of the crabs fighting each other for shells, or even going after some of the snails looking for a new home. Scarlet leg hermits are another great option with their brighter red legs. They really do make for a colorful addition. I like to keep a variety of different hermit crabs in the tank, just in case one species will tend to go for something that the other ones maybe don't like to eat. Lastly, I have my electric blue hermit crab, and this is the largest hermit crab that I have, and it's also one of the most colorful. I really like the blue and black striped legs and bright orange antenna. Another very popular type of invert are shrimp. I have several different types of shrimp in my tank. This one here is called the skunk cleaner shrimp. They call them cleaner shrimp because fish will actually come up to them and allow them to clean them off of any parasites or dead or dying scales. It really is a cool interaction to watch, but unfortunately they just didn't want to cooperate while I was filming these videos. So I wasn't able to catch it on camera. In addition to performing the important cleaning duties, these cleaner shrimp also make for excellent scavengers and will eat pretty much any uneaten fish food that they come across. This is the blood red fire shrimp. This one will also perform many of the same cleaning duties as the skunk cleaner shrimp. Although the blood red fire shrimp do tend to be a lot more reclusive than the cleaner shrimp who are out all day. These guys do tend to spend much of the daylight hours hiding in a cave and will reveal themselves only when the lights are low or when it's feeding time. This unusual looking shrimp is called the harlequin shrimp. It has a very specific job, and that is to prey upon those nuisance Asterina stars. Those are those tiny white starfish, which can explode to large populations if left unchecked, and can even damage corals. So this shrimp's job is solely to prey upon those starfish and eradicate them from my system. This one here is an anemone shrimp called the sexy shrimp. 
doesn't have much of a job in the tank, but it does look cool living here within the Iraqan enemies, so I think it makes for a good addition. The last shrimp I'll be showing is my green pistol shrimp. I bought this shrimp with the hopes that it would pair up with my yellow watchman goby, but sadly those two never hit it off and decide to live on separate sides of the aquarium. This shrimp has an extensive tunnel network underneath of the live rock, and I do only occasionally see him when he decides to show himself or come out and look for some food. Most times you will not see this guy though, but you do know he's there because you can hear the popping sound that he makes when he wants to warn other shrimp or fish or crabs or anything else that gets too close to his caves, he will let them know that he's in there by making that popping sound that pistol shrimp were known for. Snails are another mainstay to any cleanup crew and will spend all day silently looking for algae to consume. They really can do a great job of keeping the rocks and the glass clean. Most snails are not very interesting to watch, although you can get some species, such as this conch snail, which are interesting to watch as they go about their business, keeping the sand bed clean and anything that they can get with that elongated snout that they use for eating any unwanted waste or algae, basically anything that they can get their little trunk on, they will try to consume. I like to watch this guy as he pushes his way through the sand bed. And he will also bury himself into the sand, which will help to keep the sand bed stirred up and help in general sand bed maintenance. Another type of invert that you will commonly find in a reef tank is the lowly bristle worm. Many people go to great lengths to keep these out of their tank, but in my experience, they make for excellent scavengers. These things can get into every crevice, every hole, and even deep down in the sand bed, and they will consume pretty much anything that is unreachable to everything else in the tank. So unless you are completely overwhelmed by a bristle worm population, in my opinion, they can make for an interesting addition to the biodiversity in the tank and can be quite helpful in aiding the rest of the cleanup crew in their, in their function. These will typically be introduced on a piece of live rock or coral frag, so unless you are super careful, I think it is inevitable that these guys will find their way into their tank at some point. Another type of hitchhiker that you may commonly see are micro brittle stars. You will typically only see their arms poking out of the rockwork as they reach out, trying to grab onto little bits of food as it floats by. These guys make for excellent scavengers and really do help keep the internals of the rockwork clean. As we work our way down the food chain, I think it's worth mentioning the amphipods and copepods. These are among some of the smallest inverts that we're going to find in our reef tank and will be responsible for breaking down those last tiny bits of food. They also make for a great food source for many of the fish in the main display tank. And a healthy pod population can indicate a healthy ecosystem. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'm going to end this one here. So if you have any questions, please leave them below. And if you did find this helpful, hit the thumbs up button. And if you're not already subscribed, please hit the subscribe if you want to see more videos such as this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.